Question 156. Which of the following is most likely to occur in case of adrenal insufficiency? Blood glucose level will increase. Excessive sodium loss will occur. Precocious puberty may occur. Blood pressure will increase. In the question, the body is suffering from adrenal insufficiency. It means the adrenal hormones would decrease. And these hormones include glucocorticoids, mineralocorticoids, sex corticoids, etc. One important mineralocorticoid is aldosterone. It has an important role in water conservation in the body. It reabsorbs sodium ions in the nephron along with water, thus maintaining the blood volume and blood pressure. Now because of decrease in this, the body would show greater water loss and the blood pressure would also fall because the blood volume would be decreased. Let's go over the options. Option 1, blood glucose level will increase. That is incorrect. Glucocorticoids bring about an increase in blood glucose level and in their deficiency or insufficiency, blood glucose will decrease rather. Option 2, excessive sodium loss will occur. This is true. Sodium would be lost resulting in water loss. So this is a correct statement. Precocious puberty may occur. This is possible but question is asking about most likely. So option 2 is better suited here. Option 3, precocious puberty may occur. No, that would be incorrect. In fact, puberty would be delayed because of insufficiency of sex corticoids. And option 4, blood pressure will increase. This is also incorrect. With the loss of water, the blood pressure would decrease. Thus, in case of adrenal insufficiency, option 2, that is excessive sodium loss will occur, would be a correct fit. The correct answer is option 2. Question 157. Identify the incorrect statement about skeletal muscles. Their muscle fibers are arranged parallelly. These muscles are attached with bones through ligaments. A skeletal muscle fiber is a single cell. Their contractile mechanism depends upon contractile proteins. We need to identify or select an incorrect statement about striated voluntary or skeletal muscles. Option 1, their muscle fibers are arranged parallelly. This is true. These fibers are cylindrical in shape and they are placed next to each other in the form of bundles. The nucleus is positioned peripherally. Each of the cylinder represents a muscle fiber. Option 2, these muscles are attached with bones through ligaments. A muscle shown in red here attaches to the bone with the help of tendon and not ligament whereas one bone is connected to the other bone through ligament so this is incorrect option 3 a skeletal muscle fiber is a single cell this is true each of this fiber is a single cell and remember it's multinucleated with their nuclei peripherally located so this is also a true statement option 4 their contractile mechanisms depend upon contractile proteins Yes, the contractile proteins present in these muscle fibers provide them with the property of contractility. So this is a true statement. Only incorrect statement is option 2. That is our answer. Question 158. The extra oxygen or O2 consumed to remove the excess lactate and to replenish ATP stores after a period of muscle exertion is known as aerobic glycolysis anaerobic glycolysis, oxygen death, rigor mortis. Let's try to understand this. When we carry out strenuous exercise or there is muscle exertion, the ATP in the body gets used up and the body goes into a state called O2 debt or oxygen debt. Now to replenish the lost ATP or to restore the normal ATP levels, the breathing rate is increased and this is to consume more oxygen 
and with consumption of more and more oxygen ATP is replenished along with important compound called phosphoryl creatinine. Does the oxygen deficient state of the body after a period of muscle exertion is called the oxygen deficient state and extra O2 is consumed to replenish ATP. This also helps to remove the excess lactate produced during this period of strenuous exercise and this is called as O2 debt. The correct answer here is option 3 oxygen debt. Rigor mortis is seen after death and this is seen as sustained contractions of the muscles in the body due to depleted ATP stores. Remaining option 1 and 2 aerobic and anaerobic glycolysis. Glycolysis is always anaerobic. The correct answer here is option number 3 oxygen death. Question 159. Which of the following is incorrect with respect to skeletal muscle contraction? Light miromycin contains binding sites for ATP and actin. Conformational change in troponin results in unmasking of myosin binding site on actin. Actin filaments slide over myosin filaments so that H zone decreases. Length of A band remains unchanged. A miromyosin or a myosin monomer is made up of two parts, a globular head and a tail region. The globular head portion is also called as heavy miromycin, while the tail part is called as LMM or light miromycin. And the binding sites for ATP and actin, which are seen here, is present in the head or heavy miromycin. So this statement that it's present in the light miromycin is incorrect. Option 2 suggests that there is change in the troponin which results in unmasking of the myosin binding site on the actin. This is true and this is needed for formation of cross bridges. So this is a true statement. Option 3 that actin filaments slide over myosin filaments so that H zone decreases. Yes, this is also true. During shortening of the muscle that is contraction, the I bands reduce, the Z lines come closer and the H zone decreases whereas the A band retains its length. This is a true statement. Option 4 length of A band remains unchanged. This is also true with respect to muscle contraction. The incorrect statement here is option number 1 and that is our answer. Question 160. Consider the following statements about human eye. There are statements A, B, C and D and we have to choose the option which includes only correct statements. Let's read the given statements. It is protected by bony walls of the orbit. Yes, this is a true statement. The bony sockets that are present protect the eyes and these are called as orbits. Statement B, aqueous humor is present between lens and retina. This is incorrect. Aqueous humor is present between cornea, that is this region, and between lens. So it is present in the anterior chamber while vitreous humor is present in the posterior chamber of the eye that is between lens and retina. Statement C, light cannot pass through sclera. This is true. Sclera is the dense layer of connective tissue through which light cannot pass. A modification of sclera in the anterior region is cornea which allows passage of light but sclera does not permit passage of light. Statement D that rhodopsin present in bipolar cells responds to stimulus that is light. This is incorrect. Rhodopsin is present in photoreceptors. This is incorrect. Rhodopsin is present in rod cells and not in bipolar cells. So in the given four statements two are correct and the correct answer here is option number three.